Hello everyone and welcome to the last week of February. My name is Marieli Sanchez and I am a fourth grade teacher in South Florida. So I'm coming to you at the end of the day and I'm just gonna go down the agenda and let you know what we ended up doing today. Starting off, we were working on finishing our body paragraphs for our informative essay. We wrote a conclusion and the students used a little rubric that I gave them, a little checklist to review and score their writing. And then in social studies, they finished answering their questions for chapter five, which they will take a test on tomorrow. In reading, we only had time for the spelling bee, but I'll show you what we did with that because we really dissected that poem. And so we didn't have time for the rest of this, which we're just moving on to tomorrow. In math, we were investigating how to join and separate angles. And in science, we took our energy, speed, and motion quiz, and we were learning about collisions. Here is the spelling bee passage so that we can see how we dissected the entire poem. We did go through our whole entire spade strategy, which is a reading comprehension strategy that we use in our district. And after we read the poem one time, we went stanza by stanza to really ask ourselves what was happening. And also we were able to find some literary devices like personification, simile. So here we were comparing books on her lap, open like wounded birds. And yeah, making all these annotations in order to determine the main idea and the theme. And then the students went ahead and answered these questions on the back. In writing, like I said, we finished our essay. So here is where we left off last week. And I decided to add a little bit more on BT corn like we had planned to do according to our plan here. I gave the students an option whether they wanted to include it or not because I felt like this second body paragraph was filled with enough examples. And then I went ahead and I talked about the benefits of GMOs. And as you can see, I literally ran out of space. I had to cram up my conclusion down here, but it is done. And then this is the little rubric that I gave to the students so they can check off as they went along to look for their purpose, focus, and organization, which the most I can get is four points, evidence and elaboration, and conventions. And then I had them total it all up and give me a comment about how they felt about their writing. From here, I'm gonna use what they wrote in order to do a mini lesson tomorrow in writing. And then on Wednesday, they're going to take a timed practice test so that they can take all these things that we have been reviewing about informative writing and put it to practice. All right. In science, like I said, we were doing collisions and we were working on a really cool explore learning gizmo, but I don't have time to show that to you today. If I do remember, I'll let you see it tomorrow. But now let's go ahead and move on to Tuesday. Hello everyone and welcome to Tuesday. So I'm at the end of the day and I'm just gonna jump in and show you all the things that we ended up doing today. We started our day with writing again. We did a bucketing the evidence activity that I'll show you in a moment. We went over elaboration techniques and revisions right here on the side. I wrote what revisions are. We're making the big changes to improve our writing. And then I show the students all these different ways that they could do it so I can give them some examples and ideas. And then it was time for music, lunch recess. In social studies, we finished those questions. For chapter five, we did the lesson game. That was pretty cool. And they took the chapter test, which they did pretty good on. And then in math, we went over problem solving unknown angles. We reviewed vocabulary and reading. They read the selection. The main selection took the selection test. And in science, we finished the collisions gizmos lab and they did their collisions quiz. I know, so many things that we did today. Let's go ahead and show you the bucketing activity first. So again, this is the essay that I showed you yesterday. So what I did is I wanted the students to really work on making sure they had all the parts that they need for that last paragraph that they're working on their own. So I have this sheet that I created, it's a bucket. And over here, they put the topic and they put what kind of essay it is and the body paragraph topic. For this one, the last body paragraph was benefits of GM foods as an advancement in science, which we said it could solve world hunger. So then I gave the students stickies. So the blue stickies stand for evidence, the orange stickies stand for elaboration. 
And I had them look in each of our sources for evidence to support this. And we found two pieces of evidence. And then I gave them an orange sticky so they can go ahead and elaborate on that. Now they're gonna use this eventually to revise their essays, which is why you saw revision on the board. So then I gave them a two-sided line sheet of paper and I had them rewrite that last paragraph, skipping every other line so that we have room for revisions once they copy the entire paragraph. So this is my paragraph that I copied on the back and then I'm gonna model for the students how they're going to then go from here and revise this to make sure they have everything they need, including the right evidence and elaboration to support what they're trying to say in this particular paragraph, which then supports the main topic of the essay. It's a mouthful, but that's pretty much all that we were working on today in writing. We also went over some elaboration strategies, and this is a resource that I have in my TPT store, which goes over what is elaboration, basically answering the question, why is this important, and making sure we support our thinking and make connections to the topic, and pretty much just explain why what we're saying is important, why is the evidence important, why is this idea important, this reason important, etc. So this resource contains all of these different things, including sentence starters and student note pages, so students can put it in writing notebooks if you do do that as well. So I'll leave a link to this resource in the description box below. For the social studies lesson game, this is what we were working on. Basically, it had the different sections of our book in different categories, similar to Jeopardy. And then the students will come up and choose a question category, and then they answer this question. And again, it goes with the information that we were learning in our chapter. So we answer, and then we get points correctly, and those are added to our overall points. And we kept going through that until it was time for us to take the test. So this was a really nice way to review the entire chapter. I didn't get to show you this yesterday, but this is the gizmo. This is by Explorer Learning, and this is something that our district provides for us. But I found this really great electronic lab on collisions. So you can make it a full screen, and it also brings teacher exploration pages and student exploration pages that pretty much guide you on how you can work on this. But with this particular lab, we were working on what causes collisions. So let's say that I have my glider one here. I'm gonna make it be a mass of three kilograms and the velocity of 10. And then I'm just gonna leave this second glider as half of the mass of the other one, 1 1.5. And we're gonna increase this velocity a little bit. So let's say it's going at five meters per second and we're gonna play the simulation. And what happens if I decrease the elasticity? And that's what happens. So we were looking at different collision simulations. And if I increase the elasticity, so it was a really cool way for the students to visually see how collisions occur and how they depend on the mass and the velocity of the objects that are at play. I have to say that thanks to this lab, my students had a really good understanding on collisions and they did a great job on that collisions quiz. All right, so I'm gonna gather all my things because I am really tired. My son is waiting for me and we're gonna go home and relax and I have running club tonight, so I gotta do that as well. All right, so I'll see you tomorrow, Wednesday. Hello and welcome to Wednesday. So let's get right to it and look at this agenda. We started the day with a writing practice test, which then had us move on over the reading part. I was being ambitious. I thought I could do a little bit of reading after the practice test, but the writing practice test is two hours long. And we needed to start at 9.10 because I was waiting for the students to settle and we had to do a couple of things and then the morning announcements etc so then we took a little break at 10 10 we resumed at 10 12 the break is only for stretching they stand up they stretch a little bit and then we keep going and then we ended at 11 12 and our lunch is at 11 30. so then we went ahead and had to move the reading for tomorrow which is fine and then spanish was canceled so i was happy because then we could go over using spanish time and then after lunch, we went over the chapter 11 review test and the students were having such a great time. I'll let you know what we did that I ended up moving science for tomorrow because in order to do the chapter 11 review test, I had the students open their math books to the chapter review test, but we did this in a fun way, not a boring way. I randomly called on different teams and different members in the teams to answer each question. And if they got the questions correct, 
they got to pull a card from this Bazinga board. Now the cards are all over here because I wanted to show you what they were. And basically we played a game of Bazinga, which is one of the games that I shared for the E2E conference back in October when the focus was games. So basically Bazinga is a game that I learned about while doing some research in Pinterest, but you get a poster board, or this is actually a foam board that I got from Dollar Tree for a dollar, and Dollar Tree also has these poster stickers, so with letters, so I just did the little cover, the title, and these are little library pockets that you can get from your teacher store or even at Amazon. I use double-sided sticky tape to put them on, but in retrospect, I should have also laminated them because this is like the second time I'm using this, and the pockets are getting a little bit beat up. But you have a total of 27 cards and each pocket gets three cards per pocket. So that's how you have 27 cards since there are nine pockets. Now the object of this game is to draw cards. They have all different things, scenarios that play out, but the best card to get in the entire game is the Bazinga card where you take half of every team score. But the other things that they could get, and they could randomly just choose any pocket and take the cards out, these are some of the different things. So erase two points from one other team randomly, add two points, and erase one point from all teams, double your score, which some of the students said that it was OP, double your score, add two points, take two points away from a random team and give it to your team. And let me see, because there were some really fun ones over here. Randomly have a player from a high scoring team switch to a low scoring team. Then we keep going. Or randomly switch one player from each of the other teams. Or the team with the least points must do 10 jumping jacks. And we had a similar one for the team with the most points, etc. Now, the cool thing about this is, and I'm going to share a couple of things with you. I actually use my iPad and a random teacher picker app that I use there to make sure I knew which teams I was calling. So I was giving each team a fair amount of time to answer questions. And I also randomly call on different students so they can answer those questions within that team. And if students got switched around, I was able to do that with that app as well. So I want to show you that app really quickly and something that I learned. So I started the students with having no points. But a little bit into the game, I realized that I should have at least had them start with all the same amount of points. So I ended up giving every team 10 points because we were at like negative one point and one point and things like that. And I was like, well, let me make this a little bit more interesting. So I started each team with 10 points. And then from there, it went on. So let me show you this app. So this app is called Teacher's Pick, and I had it for some time. I don't know if it costs any money because, again, I've had it for a long time. And basically, you get to add little craft sticks that you can just literally add whatever you want. So for this one, I just added the names of the teams, and then I did a copy of it in case I needed to use it for something else. Now here, as I let me put them back awake. As you start, all of them start with a happy face, and then you do this, and it randomly selects a student or in this case, different teams, as you can see. And then once I call on a team, then I can touch the smiley face and it goes to sleep so that it doesn't call on that team again. So I really love that. And then you could do the same thing with the individual teams. So in here, I have little classes that I created, but in, it's really the teams. And in these folders, I have little craft sticks that have all the names of the students so that I can go ahead and choose the students and the teams, etc. So I really love this app. I use it for different things, including knowing which students get to go on laptops, Chromebooks, and desktop computers. So really, really love this app, and there's so many different ways that you can use it. I also had created this slide on PowerPoint to keep track of all the points that the teams were able to earn. So it was really fun. And there's one more thing that I did at the end. So I told the students that at the end, we would flip a coin to the side if the highest score was the winner or not. So I said, okay, I'm going to flip a coin, which I just used my Alexa app. And I said, Alexa, flip a coin. And I told them before I said that, that if I landed on heads, then the highest points will win. If I landed on tails, the lowest points wins. That means the team with the lowest points will be the winner. So that's a little something that you could also do in order to keep the suspense and not knowing what's gonna happen. But basically, at the end of the day, every team Team did a really good job so every team got points added to their houses for the classroom so yeah it was a really great way to end the day and I didn't want to lose that momentum which is why I decided to move science 
for tomorrow. So yeah, that was our day full of writing, full of math, and it's Wednesday. Wednesdays is short because the kids go home at 1.50. So tomorrow is a new day. Tomorrow we are wrapping up chapter 11 by taking that test since we did the review today. And they are most likely going to also take their reading assessment as well to wrap up that unit. So very excited for what the rest of the week will bring us. And yeah, we'll be completing some mini lessons tomorrow in writing and things like that. All right, so I hope you enjoyed coming along with me for this Wednesday. And now we're gonna move us on to Thursday. Hello and welcome to Thursday, or like I like to refer it, Friday Eve. I'm at the end of the day as always, and I'm going to start by showing you our agenda for today. We started the day off again with writing and they were finishing revising their benefits paragraph. We're still working on those. And then I decided to do a really neat activity where the students physically sorted evidence. I'll show you what I mean by that in a moment. And we had to move our elaboration practice over for tomorrow because we needed more time for the evidence sort. Then we went into our specials, lunch in science. We were looking at energy transfer. And the rest of the day wasn't as exciting because they were just taking a test in math, a test in reading, which they needed more time for. So I moved our social studies for tomorrow. The evidence sort started with this PowerPoint that I put together with all of these sentences that were from the sources that they read for yesterday's practice test. So I put all of these sentences in strips, like here in blue paper, because blue is our evidence, as I've been color coding with them. And the kids were tasked to get together with other people that had similar evidence so they can group together. And what they decided is all the people that had evidence that supported spider silk got together, all the people that had evidence that supported the Neptune balls got together, and all the people that had the evidence that supported rubber got together. Then I had the students meet with a person from an opposite group so that they can discuss how their evidence had similarities and differences because the prompt was asking the students to compare and contrast two interesting materials and then tell how they are being used. So we were in the middle of that when it was time for them to go to special, so we didn't have time. I just gotta say, it included movement in the classroom. The students were up and around and discussing the evidence together, and it was great. The students loved it. They said they really enjoyed the activity, so it's a win for me. All right, so now I got to get my things and head out, but I will catch up with you tomorrow, Friday. Hello and welcome to Friday. We've made it to the end of the week, last week of February. And then on Sunday, March starts. So when we come back on Monday, it is the first Monday of March. So crazy. Tomorrow's leap day. And I'm coming to you at the end of the day. So let's get to what we ended up accomplishing today. We started with our evidence sorting activity that I went over yesterday. So we finished that activity up. And then the students started doing an elaboration practice, which I'll show you what we ended up doing in a moment. And then in social studies, we introduced chapter six. We didn't have time for a Native American project, so that got moved to next week. In math, the students were finishing their chapter 11 tests, and I was giving them feedback on that. So we didn't really have time to introduce chapter 12, which is fine by me because I'd rather start a new chapter on a new week. And in reading, we were finishing our Wonders Unit for Week 5 assessment. And we didn't have time to read this beautiful book that I've been meaning to read to them by the actress Lupita Nyong'o, Zoe. So I am going to definitely read this to the students next week. So this is the elaboration practice assignment that I gave to the students with the directions at the top and a paragraph that is not written with much elaboration or evidence. So the students are working on these lines down here so that they can improve that paragraph. The lines continue on the back. So I will be giving students more time to do so next week. So that really wraps up what we ended up doing today, Friday. And then we ended the day with recess, which the students really enjoyed. And yeah, looking forward to next week, starting a new month. We have three more weeks of school before we have spring break. So we are right down to crunch time because our writing test is in 18 school days. So we are going to really do more writing practice, making sure students fine tune those writing skills 
So looking forward to that as well. All right, so I hope you enjoy coming along with me on this week's classroom vlog. If you did, don't forget to hit the like button, leave a comment down below, let me know what you thought or any questions you may have. Also, if you haven't subscribed, please consider subscribing and hitting that bell for notifications so you don't miss any future videos. I hope you have a beautiful, magical day and don't forget to smile. Hello dreamers, wishers, and magical thinkers. Thank you so much for making it to the very end of this video and for showing your support. If you'd like to subscribe, you can do so by clicking on my picture down here. You can also check out my latest videos here and here. Don't forget to believe in the magic that's inside you because you are capable of great things. See you next time.